Hello and welcome back to the Ivy Grove YouTube channel. My name is Meg Birch and I am so excited today to say that we are talking to an incredible female artist, songwriter, but also a lovely friend of mine called Katie Sky. You are not ready for this. Katie Sky is incredible. She writes for other people, she signed with Universal Publishing House and writes a lot of K-pop, so that's the Korean and Chinese music scene, but also Katie is an artist in her own right. Uh, she released a song a few years back called Monsters, which has had an extreme amount of success. With over 18 million listens on Spotify, it saw her go to America, perform it live on Good Morning America, so we're going to talk about that. Um, but also we're going to talk to her about her new release uh, that she released on Friday, her new single Strangers, which, let me tell you, you need to go listen to. So we'll be talking about that. And also she'll be giving us a few tips and tricks of how to get into songwriting, how to get better at our songwriting, and uh, also tell us a few little kind of industry stories along the way. So stay tuned, this is going to be really, really interesting, insightful, and uh, maybe even a little bit educational. Um, here is my chat with Katie Sky. Enjoy. Hello, Katie Sky. Hey, Meg, how are you doing? I am very well. It's such a pleasure to see your beautiful face. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm on my second cup of coffee, I'm here. We've had a little catch up. It's good. Yeah, I'm feeling zesty. Good. Oh, I like that. Okay. <laughs> um, so I've kind of done a little intro about you, a little overview of what I know, but in oh. your own words, can you tell the audience kind of what you're about, what a typical week looks like and who you are, what you do? My name is Katie Sky. <laughs> <laughs> I am a singer and a songwriter. Uh, during my weeks, I am writing a lot of songs um, for myself and for lots of other people as well like around the world and yeah that's all I do during the week it's mainly just songwriting my bum off um, but yeah over the last few years I've had various songs of mine do quite well uh, one of them called Monsters which is the one that most people know me for over in Asia for some reason has blown up and it's like seven years old so I'm not complaining <laughs> I'll take it. Um, but yeah, just doing a lot of uh, a lot of music these days for other people and for myself. Lots of songwriting, lots of singing. Trying to learn Mandarin. Mm. Singing in Mandarin is hard, but I'm trying it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that okay. is what I do. That's who I am. Amazing. So I wanted to chat to you today because basically wanted to rack your brains in terms of tips, tricks, how you got into songwriting, mostly looking at the songwriting side of stuff. Um, yeah. I think because it's often a part of the industry that a lot of people don't know about, it's very much a behind the scenes process. Um, obviously we will talk a bit about your artistry and I want to talk to you about your new single, Strangers. Um, yeah, yeah. Really exciting. So we'll talk about that a bit later. But can you give us a little overview of, have you always wanted to be a songwriter? How did you get into it? How has the way your life is now, how did that become a thing? Yes, uh, I've been songwriting literally since I was about 12, 13, like same as yourself. If music is in your family, it's in your family mm. and you think about it and you do it. And yeah, you're in like cringy little school plays when you're <laughs> <laughs> when you're little and all that lot. So I definitely grew up in that kind of setting. Um, I started songwriting a lot more. Yeah, like obviously after I left home, started studying it and uh yeah, songwrite for myself mainly, and I was in a band for a long time, uh, till I was about, I want to say 22, 23, and, uh, and then I started doing stuff for, my, for myself, for my solo project, and yeah, the songwriting for other people came through this songwriting for myself. I think if you're a, a singer and you songwrite, it's very easy for you to be a feature on other people's mm. tracks, so, um, so I yeah, the, the main thing started off when a lot of DJs, DJs are amazing producers, they know how to produce a good track and they do it very quickly, usually from the comfort of their own homes, they've got like a home studio set up, so yeah, so all they need is a singer to come and write over their tracks and so that's how I got into it initially, I was just being sent a lot of tracks from various kind of dance labels or EDM labels, mainly from DJs who just needed a good hook 
and I love a good pop hook. So yeah, I started writing mainly for lots of DJs because it was, they all they needed was a singer and songwriter and all I needed was a track. So therefore, great partnership. Match made in so, yeah, heaven. So, so yeah, so mainly, yeah, uh, yeah, that's called top lining. So, so top lining was what I kind of started to get into. And then kind of off the back of that, I did a lot of writing camps where, as you, I'm sure you know, you go to a place in a, a group of studios and you'll get maybe as little as 30 people and as much as 80 to 100 people in one space. And for the next five days, you'll be in a different studio every day and you write a new song every day. And this really pushed me and challenged me to like, make friends very quickly, write songs very quickly, deadlines, don't wait for inspiration, like you have to do it in a day. Because if you don't do it in a day, it's not gonna happen. So that was a big learning curve for me as a writer, to not just, I think that's the difference between being an artist and being a writer. As an artist, you can just wait until you're inspired and then write a song as almost like therapy, but as a songwriter, you do not have that luxury. So, so yeah, so it was very challenging, but I love it. And now I'm kind of going backwards. I was for the last couple of years doing more songwriting for other people than myself. And now because of various things and interest, it's kind of going backwards. I'm being shoved back into the artist category, which again, I'm very, very lucky for and I'm, I'm very happy for so so yeah <laughs> that wasn't too much of a spiel no no not at all um I guess kind of you, you spoke a bit about top lining so I just want to explain because we get a lot of people who watch that aren't musicians so won't understand yes. so you've explained what top lining is in the world of songwriting from what I know and I'm very kind of new to kind of the professional side of it um, there's several kind of areas you can go into as a songwriter. So there's top lining, um, you can be really heavily involved in kind of the production and, and creating the whole track as a whole. Um, there's library music, so things for TV, film, um, yeah, all that sort of stuff and, and briefs. So things where, things like the camps and, and, and um, being given briefs, people will be listening at home and going, Okay, so she went on a camp. How does that come about? Did you have to pay to be on the camp? Did they approach you? Were you signed? Were you, like, how does that come about? For some of them, I literally just Googled writing camps. And there's one in Sweden. Uh, I think it's in uh, Rina that I went to a couple of years ago that I just, I applied for and I got in. So people don't have to be signed to find these things. I could literally give you like five email addresses right now. Do you know what I mean? At websites, sorry. So so I think if you just research your writing camps and apply with a portfolio of songs that you've written recently, then you get in and it's fine. Some of them, yeah, you have to pay for, but it would be mainly if it's abroad and they have to uh, provide accommodation and food. So I think for that one arena, it was like 160 krona. So that was like 120 quid for all of the accommodation food for like four days. So that's fine by me. I can, I can, I can deal with that. But yeah, in terms of like getting those opportunities, I would say it's half and half. I would say it's me researching and emailing. Cause if you don't ask, you don't get, mm -hmm. and then it's half. Yeah. Like people I know being like, Oh, you should come to this writing camp. And again, I only know those people because I went into the session with them and they obviously liked something about the way I worked. So the whole time it's you it's up to you it's not going to be even if you have a manager even if you have a label even if you have a publisher it's nothing really to do with them like it's 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 you it's your job mm -hmm. to do this so so yeah so like going out of your way to go and research these places and sending an email what's the worst that's going to happen they're just not going to email you back which happens a lot yeah. But you get over it you just got you got to get back on the horse every morning and send out those emails my next question was so I often, if I'm interviewing a female, I like to get your perspective on, especially again, this part of the industry, the songwriting world is massively saturated with men. I'm not against men. It, for some reason, it just is the way, I mean, a statistic from last year was there's 12.5% of female writers in the industry and 2.6%, 2.6% female producers. How have you found it with things like camps or going in with sessions with people you've never known? Have you ever felt, and, and maybe you haven't, 
but have you ever felt a bit underestimated because you might be the only woman in the room or how do you deal with egos getting in the way or oh no I want to write that chorus my idea is better or how do you cope with that I think honestly like we're a bunch of creatives you know we're pretty much all the same personality type and if you've got six of you writing in one room which many people would say they would never do a session with more people in the room than five there's gonna be clashes it's gonna happen you can't be offended you have to hold things lightly especially if the song you're writing is for another artist it's not for you you don't have the last word you have to let that go even if genuinely you think that chorus would be better with this lyric instead of that lyric it's not your say you're there to aid the songwriting in the room like you said to kind of continue the flow of creativity you're not there to put a spanner in the works i know a lot of people would probably disagree with me on this but this is my personal approach i think the reason why a lot of people are happy to go back into the studio with me is because i'm quite open to everyone's ideas and i'd like to stay that way mm -hmm. i'd like to stay that way yes of course i'll have my own opinions and yes of course if we're writing an absolute pop banger and I come up with a melody that I think is like amazing. I'm gonna fight for it. Of course, I'm gonna fight for it. But at the end of the day, you have to kind of figure out who has the last word. And it could be something as simple as the producer, as the male, as they often are in the room. If they are signed to a bigger label or have more of a following than you, it might be that actually it's in your best interest to agree with them this time. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately that is the name of the game like whether they're male or female actually for, for that matter but yeah just in terms of the men women thing I've done sessions before with the brief that I've had to write for a guy and had to sing in a man's key mm -hmm. <laughs> and try and put myself in in the mind of a man to to say what they would say and even that's really hard but I like a challenge and I like to I like to try and think outside the box, but yeah, in terms of the male female thing, I don't think I've ever felt uncomfortable. No one I've worked with has ever made me feel underestimated. If anything, I just get really loud and chatty and bossy. <laughs> and I have to tell myself to sit down for a minute and calm yourself. Um, so if anything, I feel like, yeah, I, I have to just, yeah, take the time to let everyone else in the room contribute before I, steamroll ahead with my ideas mm. <laughs> and I think at the beginning definitely didn't have as much confidence as I do now in my own ideas the more you write with other people as I'm sure you know like you just get used to really backing yourself and backing your own ideas and the melodies and the lyrics and the song titles that come about you can be like guys and you'll just get used to sharing more mm. um and then you won't yeah you won't feel like undermined or underestimated yeah. because it's you, you know you've got something to give yeah. I remember the first time, like the first few kind of bits of writing I've done, every idea, because a lot of my, because I've kind of gotten into this world via doing a lot of sessions remotely. So yeah. it's, it's very much like sending an idea off, what do you think? And I yeah. remember I would send like virtually every email with, if you don't like it, um, just let me know. Like, I, I'm really not offended. I can do everything again. And like really apologizing and like yeah. thinking they're just going to hate it. And like, I, I want to, I want them to know that like, I, I'm okay if they like shoot me down. Whereas yeah. I think, as you say, it's a confidence thing. And also knowing that if an idea is rejected, especially if you're writing for another artist it's not a reflection on you because no. it's just it's just preference. an idea yeah it's musical preference like even though yeah we have like baselines of what be we believe is really good and not great we have baselines of that everyone has their own musical preference whether they like pop or not whether they believe that this thing is pop or not everyone has their own musical preference so it could literally just come down to that like and that's why depending if your job is to be the songwriter in the room or the artist, you got to figure out who has the last word. Mm. That's quite important, I think. Yeah. So talking about um, working remotely or getting started into kind of songwriting and things like that, I spoke briefly about gear and tips and things like that. If, um, I don't know, say little Jimmy, who's 15, wants to get his songs down, um, <laughs> little Jimmy, um, what do you think in terms of, do you need gear? Do you need to understand how to kind of, 
you know, garage band, things like that. Is, is that, do you find that crucial or do you think it can be a case of also, do you have to, um, how important do you think it is, you know, to have an instrument to handle? I don't really, play, I've got a keyboard there that I tinkle on and I know a couple of chords on guitar, but most of the time I do what you do, which is I'm given a track and I just need to put kind of lyrics and a melody too. Yeah. But how important do you think that is in terms of, if you were setting out to, I want to be a songwriter when I'm older or yeah. whatever. I think it, again, it depends like, okay, so let's say you're starting out, like little mm. Jimmy, you starting <laughs> out from nothing. Um, I feel like, yeah, it depends what he's kind of trying to go in into, hypothetically speaking. If it was the top line world, like you say, you get back and tracks, you get free back and tracks on the internet all the time and getting used to the whole like blanking your brain completely listening to a backing track and writing the first thing, the second thing, the third thing that you hear and just do that every day for a week and just keep flipping doing it until you get used to it. That's a good way of doing things for sure. But I mean, to get that down, to be able to record that and then send a demo off, you'd need some sort of microphone. You can get USB microphones now that are pretty good. The USC 1000, I think it is literally just plug straight into your laptop um so you can get pretty good mics that are like 35 quid do you know what i mean just to get a demo down i've been sent awful demos in the past that have then made it out to the world and been released so i don't think the quality of the demo is is as important as people think it is mm. um but then if he plays an instrument like you say same i don't play an instrument at all i wish i could and to no. be honest it's something i still really want to stretch and like actually challenge myself to do but the thing that I'm really learning at the moment is logic and yeah like how to EQ my own vocals and because I do so much top line just wanting to be able to send a really good demo off to someone yeah. of my vocals three-part harmony some doubles on a chorus that kind of vibe and being able to like really master how to um put like a really good delay on there do you know what I mean mm -hmm. the reverb and just make it sound good enough to send so if you want to do that route logic pro or garage brand is is really good for that just learning your own vocal as a songwriter is really handy because then when you go into sessions as well you can be like I've got a really husky voice so you need to add top end and cut out all the bottom do you know what I mean so I think I think understanding what you can do by yourself when you mm -hmm. go into other settings then it's helpful but yeah for for little jimmy i would say if he's doing top lines flipping practice 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 yeah. if he's doing just normal songs yeah practice on keyboard or or with guitar you're gonna have to have some some sort of microphone to record that in and you're gonna have to have some sort of program like garage band mm. or logic to be able to make a proper demo to send out but that's it really yeah don't need much I think it's definitely kind of what you put in, you'll get out. I think mm -hmm. the whole thing of practice makes perfect. I mean, what's perfect, but you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Um, and I think as well, in terms of gear, it, I think it also depends whether you want to be, as you say, primarily a songwriter or an artist. Yeah. If you're the artist thing, you'll probably go and need to meet someone who can produce you and you go that route and you get, you know, yeah. There's less time constraints, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but that's really, really interesting. I hope little Jimmy out there, if you really exist, <laughs> you're really inspired right Jimmy. now. <laughs> <laughs> little Jimbo. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit random, aren't I? Um, no, I love it. Right, so I just briefly want to talk to you a bit about artistry then. Um, so you say you started out as an artist to begin with. Um, you were signed as well, weren't you? Uh, you were on Lab Records, is that right? Lab Records, that's the one. How did you find being a signed artist? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, at the beginning, I think um, any independent label. I've had like experience of both now because I'm I'm currently published by a major. Mm -hmm. um, so signed to an independent, but published by a major. So I've had experiences of both, both very different both still i still feel like even if you have the world's best team around you it's it's your prerogative it's your responsibility to send those emails i think i think they can only do so much you know and and i i've i've seen a lot of people think they're going to sign to a label 
and then that's it they can put their feet up do you know what i mean and it's it's not i don't believe it's like that at all you've still got a lot of work on your end to do and um because you may be one of 40 people on their roster and maybe one of the smaller fish as opposed to the bigger fish you know with universal i am a small small fish you know what i mean small so um so yeah so i still think it's in your prerogative to um to push your artistry forward but yeah at the time it was really really good yeah I had lots of um it's always helpful to be backed money wise when you've got like music videos to shoot and artwork to sort out and people to master the ep and all that lot like it's always good to be able to have financial backing so a label is really good in that sense and then also just to have a plan i think you um very much a planner <laughs> and an organizational even though i'm like fully creative i have this whole very like list and schedule approach to my life on the other on the other side of me um so even though yeah with a label they would put like a plan in place i think from for you as an artist it's important to know like over the next year what do i want to achieve mm -hmm. every january i go away for like a a day day and a half to an airbnb just by myself i've done it for the last like five years now and i found it so good and i literally just take my notebook and i just go and i chill and i meditate a bit and i i write down goals that i want to achieve within the next year and then by the end of that year i can look back and i'm like done them all do you know what i mean and not just to do with me like to do with yeah how life turns out as well but mm. it's the fact that you kind of start off the year so focused like this is what I would like to achieve if I had my way, you know, that a lot as well. So yes, being assigned, sorry, I'm meandering. Being assigned no, artist was great. Um, yeah, I'm no longer with Lab at the moment um, because again, I kind of moved into more songwriting for other people. Mm -hmm. So it didn't make sense for me to have a label, but now it's looking like it's going back that way. Um, and I'm talking with a few labels at the moment. So who flipping knows what's gonna happen i don't know i'm i'm excited i'm happy here i'm always interested to ask this question highs and lows in terms of yeah. being an artist obviously a lot of people think of the highs a lot of oh, i'd love i'd love to be blah blah blah. yeah yeah you've had a taste of a bit of that are there any yeah. lows yeah yeah <laughs> i remember i mean and weirdly the highs and lows for me are like wrapped up in one in one specific memory i think the very first time so i'm signed to universal out of manhattan in new york and the very first time i went over there yeah it was when i was like 23 24 and i hadn't traveled that much then after then i traveled loads but <laughs> before then that was like when i started traveling lots of places for music stuff and new york was one of the first times i went abroad by myself fully fully like on the plane and trying to get myself from jfk to like central manhattan was crazy and all this lot when you're feeling in my head i was very little anyway um and I, around the time that was when yeah uh monsters was first released and i was first signed to universal um so yeah so i think at the time that was a highlight for me i i performed on good morning america in times square um in the abc building which was mad i did like a vivo show in montauk we filmed the music video so there was they put me up in a hotel like big highs big i was literally in my head like i don't deserve any of this people are going to find me out you know they talk about the imposter syndrome yeah. i was like i just sing and i do it <laughs> you know I mean? so it, it's mad that was a that was an amazing blessed time of life for sure but on the other hand like on the other side of things when i was over there i felt so lonely and so like just the imposter syndrome like yeah i i think i had a day off and i just walked around central park by myself and like bought myself some sushi which i loved and i was like this is amazing like i feel so cool and <laughs> all this kind of stuff but at the time yeah i remember thinking like the whole of new york was just so busy and so big and everything was about money the first time i went there i was there for 12 days i had one music video on one day which was like 
13 hour shoot or something and then the rest of the days universal put me into sessions so i had 11 sessions a one music video shoot and then i got straight back on the plane and i was so exhausted and so like i was just overwhelmed by the whole again like how insignificant i was in that moment the busyness of the city paired with the whole like money mm. turnover now fast give us everything deliver right? yeah yeah <laughs> it's just like wow and it's that thing that you were saying earlier like with whatever you want to call it success in whatever capacity it brings about so much pressure and heaviness and thankfully at the time my mental health was all right so I, I wasn't like yeah I wasn't like crying or anything like that but it was it, those moments can be such a high but then you have this realization of how hard it is for the people who have to live like this mm. I miss my family and my friends so much during that time because I was so busy and it was like I've got everything I've ever worked for but is it enough like yeah so I would say the highs and lows of being an artist like the highs being yeah you get everything you've ever dreamed mm. of everything that I've ever even thought I would try and do I did I've done amazing mm. how incredible we'll never take that for granted but then the flip side being people need a piece of you you have to post every day on social media to make it look like you're busy which mm. you are but then you're not thinking straight and like you have to figure out what you want to portray to the world because people like need a piece of you yeah. I know that sounds really intense but yeah I think that's that's the bad part for me personally about being an artist is that as a songwriter you can kind of sit back and just let your work speak for itself as an artist you have to be the artist yeah. you have to be the branding you have to be the everything you're the product that's a lot of pressure to put on someone yeah so that's what i would say and i'm sure you would agree meg but yeah that for me personally that yeah that's how i feel I think it's it's really interesting and I've watched there's quite a few documentaries out at the moment I mean um Katie B did a a really interesting documentary a few years back and and Marie's just released a documentary and yeah. there's been there's been documentaries with Katie Perry and all these like yeah. you know massive artists they say all the same things don't they you Did watch you? it and they're like I bought my mum a new house I've got a car I've got everything I ever dreamed of and I don't even mean in terms of money you know they yeah. go out they have the adoration of their fans and yeah. um, they can yeah. almost they could release any old thing and their fans would be like I love it because it's yeah. you yeah. but at the same time the price you pay and I even feel in terms of I mean I haven't if you're talking about big success I haven't had that break yet but even in just the stuff I'm part of now I've missed granny and granddad's birthdays and I've been in crappy hotels getting money from a gig that I don't even really want to do yeah. you know and there's so much sacrifice and it's not that I want to like poo on our industry and go therefore <laughs> it's not worth it I no, think it is I think there's a reason why we do it because we love it yeah. um but I think especially being an, a single artist rather than even being in a band you know yeah. one direction i don't think they had a day off in like two years or something when they were like absolutely going for it yeah but at least they did have each other and they were going man this is really difficult isn't it yeah i feel yeah. you and someone else is living it with you yeah i can't imagine being a Katy perry and yeah. like just oh, no one understands but her yeah but the, i i think the cool thing is nowadays because of all these documentaries, there was a Kate Nash one that came out a couple of years ago. That's the one Kate. I meant, not Kate, oh. Kate, Kate Nash. Oh, Kate Nash. Like, That's yeah, and you saw it, exactly what you're saying, like living on someone's floor, like yeah. she got taken advantage of so many times. And we know her as Kate Nash, she's Kate Nash. Like, she's amazing, do you know what I mean? And we don't see all of that unless these documentaries come out. And I think now it's cool because it's being talked about way more than ever, it ever has. Mm -hmm. So I think people are aware and like people are posting stuff on Instagram that's way more real than it ever has been and yeah. been like here's the downs and here's the ups and, and being a bit more transparent rather than I just bought this new car, I just bought this new house, like that kind of vibe because because it is, there have to be highs and lows for it to be real, for it to be human, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. 
you can't just have a job that's always high like anybody else's job it's going to be highs and lows so yeah 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 i think it's being talked about more than ever which is good I think so too. Well, I won't keep you much longer. I want to finish talking about your amazing new single, Strangers, uh, which you've you've done with Arcane. Yes. How did that come about? What's the song about? Just tell us briefly kind of how we can stream it, all that kind of stuff as well. Stranger is on Spotify and Apple Music and everything. Everything is on everything. (laughs) Um, But yeah, Arcane, or Kevin is his name, um, me and him and three others, um, we did a writing session. It was when I was in Amsterdam for a couple of weeks last year. And we wrote the song like all in one session and we made it like a duet. And we, we actually thought at the time, like maybe we should pitch it out to someone because we thought it was really, really good, obviously. Mm. And it was really good. Again, I wasn't doing much artist stuff at the time. And then like, yeah, I think it was like the start of this year. I was listening to it and I was like, I want this song. Mm. (laughs) I was like, I want this song. I want it. So I messaged him and I was like, how would you feel if we released the song Just Us Two? Like, because he hasn't got much art stuff out. And I said, do you think it's good enough for your artist? Is that the vibe you want? And he was like, hell yes. (laughs) So we, um, as a team, yeah, decided to release it together. And yeah, it came out on Friday, which is yesterday. Um, so yeah, so it's out in the world and people seem to be enjoying it, which I'm happy about. It's a proper pop, pop heavy banger. So, uh, so yeah, tricky. and then the story behind it in terms of like lyrics and stuff, I guess as always, like heartbreak is so relatable. Like I know, I know obviously a lot of songs are written about heartbreak, but, but for us, when we started doing the session, he was talking I always do that when I go into a session I start Mm. talking about them and like what they've been up to and how they live their life and all that kind of stuff because I want to get to know them so that we can write something that's really real Mm. really good and really um relative and like yeah good for them and he was the artist in the room so yeah he started talking about yeah breakups and how rubbish they were and all this kind of stuff and like how you can go from being someone's everything to like a few hours later not being that person for that person and like Mm. not being able to ever check in with them again never being able to text them and saying how you doing like you're not that person for them anymore and it can change within three hours from one scale to the other end of the scale complete cut Mm. contact I know I've had that personally and it literally feels like some sort of grief it like is the grief. person has literally hate dropped, it. Off, dropped off the face of the planet and he said like he was like i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy and i was like yes and then he came up with the phrase i pray that you'll stay a stranger to feelings like this and i was like oh <laughs> i was like we need to use that over the chorus let's go and then yeah we wrote the whole song just around that one phrase so it was mainly him he started all yeah it was really good sick yeah. Well, it's an absolute tune. We will have it linked down in the description Thank box. You. So if you want to listen to it, go and check it out. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for no your words of wisdom. And... Thank you for having me. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. No worries. Um, and yeah, see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Well, there you have it. I really, really hope you enjoyed that. She is such a pleasure to talk to. Um, Be sure to check Katie Sky out on all her social media platforms and listen to that brand new single of hers, Strangers. It'll all be linked below in our description box. You found it really useful, really insightful and really inspiring as well. If you wanna stick around for more of this sort of content and also for covers, resources, um, please hit that subscribe button. We really need your support. We're growing really steady now and it's really nice that we're building a community here on the Ivy Grove channel. But we can't progress and we, uh, we can't develop further without your help. So please do hit that subscribe button if you're interested. Also hit that notification bell. Uh, it'll also make sure that you never miss an upload again. Sending you lots of love, people. Have an amazing week, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.